Today I'm going to show you how to use our business rules component called web rule in an MVC web application and create a simple execution type rule. If you are new to business rules you might want to know that web rule supports two types of business rules evaluation type and execution type. Execution type rules can set values or invoke methods also called actions if the conditions of the rule return true. Evaluation type rules are different in that they just return the results of the evaluation, true or false, without invoking anything. I'll leave links to documentation on both types in the description of this video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to work with execution type rules using our MVC demo project. WebRule also natively supports ASP.NET project templates and you can find a video on how to create evaluation type rules using ASP on our YouTube channel if you are interested in that platform, but in general creation and working with both rule types is not very different on either platform. By the way, you can also use WebRule as a native client-side object. All our demo projects include an Ajax page that demonstrates how to do that. Okay, we are done with introductions. Let's get down to business. This tutorial will pick up where the MVC integration tutorial left off. If you have not yet viewed that tutorial, please do so before continuing with this video. First, we need to make sure that the rule editor mode is set to execution so that we can create execution type rules. Let's start by modifying the controller. You need to declare the save, load, and delete actions if your editor uses web rules toolbar as they are necessary in order to manage your rules. The code that is used there is not part of web rule but is provided in the demo project for your convenience. Remember that web rule just gives you an XML string representation of your rule. It is entirely up to you how and where to save it. Because this demo allows you to test the currently displayed rule you also need an action that can evaluate rules against an instance of the patient class from that form. The evaluate action does just that. Because of the disconnection between the view and the controller in the MVC pattern, the action first needs to tell WebRule which source type it is going to work with. It does that by binding the patient's type to the current editor. It is necessary to then check if the rule editor actually contains a rule and that this rule is valid. WebRule validates all rules automatically. We just need to check the return value of the isValid method to see if our current rule passes validation. The XML representation of the current rule is retrieved by calling the getRuleXML method of WebRule. Next you create an instance of WebRule's evaluator and finally we evaluate the rule against the instance of our source that has passed this action as a parameter by MVC and check the result. Remember that our patient class declares the output property that our rule action used to display the different messages? Well now is the time to do that. The action passes the output message to the view using the view back. As you can see, explaining this code takes longer than actually writing it. Now we are ready to run this web application. Obviously this form is very involved and has features that are beyond the scope of this tutorial, so let's just concentrate on execution rules for now. To create a new rule, just click inside the rule area. You'll see a menu that lists all the properties and in-rule methods declared in our source. You don't need to do anything else in order to connect your data with the rules engine. WebRule does all that for you in the background as the page loads. I'm going to create a simple rule that checks if first name contains the letter A, and if so, print out a message. WebRule allows you to make menu selections in order to create a rule. It knows what you might need next or what you might need to change, and fully supports the keyboard so you can use that instead of your mouse. Note that we are not going to save, edit, or delete this rule, as those topics are covered by other tutorials. In this video we are just going to create a couple of rules and test them against the data in the form below. To test our current rule, let's enter the name John in the first name box. By the way, there is an info label declared right above the rule area. The page is set up so that this label displays the formatted result of the execution. I'm not going to elaborate on that now. You can see how it's done when you look through the code of the project. It's super easy, I promise. So let's click the test button and evaluate our rule against the data in the form. As expected, the result is false because the name in the form doesn't contain the letter A. Also notice that it took this page about a second to evaluate this rule. This is because this app uses the free version of WebRule, which has a one second delay on all execution calls, which the full version does not have. If we change the first name in the form to Alex and click the test button again, we should expect the evaluation to succeed. 
and it does succeed and displays a configured message. Now let's test the full name in rule method. If you remember, it concatenates the first and last names. Let's change our rule and make it check if the full name starts with Alex. To do that, we just need to click the rule elements that need to be changed and select new values from the menus. Let's also enter the last name Smith into the last name text box. Now click the test button and see what happens. The result is true because the full name does start with Alex. Notice that in execution mode you can create both evaluation and execution type rules. Thanks for watching this short demo and thank you for your interest in Web Rule Business Rules Engine. For details, please visit our website at rule.codeeffects.com. All links and additional info can be found in the description of this video.